So in this way, just uh, getting through the practice of Guru Yoga uh, with single-pointed devotion and having that supplication, and then also generating compassion and loving kindness to all sentient beings, and then the bodhicitta that uh, until one could uh, just uh, get uh, so stabilized with all this uh, one's own just quality that which one can give rise to it until it becomes very spontaneous and natural. And then uh, also at the end, just uh, the dedications, these are always important. <laughs> So whatever that practice we do in the beginning to have the pure motivation or intention that uh, uh, which is known as the just uh, in the beginning the generating bodhicitta and uh, that uh, how one have to just uh, think that all the sentient beings uh, they are one or other lifetime is just one's you know parent and then uh, understanding the grateful and kindness of all these you know sentient being and then thinking how one can repay back the kindness of all these uh, penalties uh, sentient beings and then uh, uh, in this way uh, the best way to benefit and uh, repay back the kindness is uh, to liberate them from the suffering of samsara and lead them to ultimate uh, realization as enlightenment and in that way just uh, one have to generate the bodhicitta which is just uh, very important whatever kind of practice or chanting we may do one have to just have that uh, intention in the beginning <laughs> And then the, uh, the second uh, precious thought or the important is that uh, um, non, no, try to maintain in the non-conceptual nature, uh, in a way all these phenomena are by its nature, it is emptiness. And emptiness is the just absolute true nature of phenomena. And in that way, one have to view and one have to understand. And uh, that is the just uh, second precious important thought. And then any time when we are just uh, getting through the practice, that uh, one need to have uh, just a uh, proper uh, way of just uh, the motivation and attitude and uh, cultivating the devotion and inclination towards the Dharma and in that way one have to really concentrate into the practice itself. <laughs> So, uh, um, turning inward into yourself and then uh, examining one's uh, mind, which means that uh, our mind are so uh, conceptualized and uh, at the same time all this kind of afflicted mind, the defilements which are just constantly just arising and that uh, what we have to just, you know, subdue or tame and in that way maintain the, you know, pure uh, attitude or motivation. Around 
sin, sartu, sartu, sin, niente di tuba, non trovate, tomba, niente, non la rompe, non perché io non la rompe, sartani, tempo si è detto, non è che mi metti, non è un gris. E then, even you do a just a daily practice, you know, generating uh, the deity or visualizing the deity, one has to just try uh, to the best level uh, how much clear one could to just, you know, visualize. And then whatever the visualization of the deity, however it appears, it has to be also not having the inherent true nature. You know, one has to understand the emptiness and then just uh, try to maintain that the deity appearance and then the emptiness as a non-dual, that uh, something which appears does not have an inherent true nature. <laughs> In general, the pride is the just uh, obstruction or that uh, cause of um, blocking all the just quality or knowledge that one could receive. But uh, when we are just generating the deity, uh, at that time one need to really have that uh, kind of positive pride, just thinking, oh, I'm such and such a meditational deity. So that in a way, it helps the, just, uh, the pride uh, as an antidote. But anyhow, the appearance or the generation uh, of the deity or the visualization itself, one have to generate from compassion and uh, that which appears, but it does not have an inherent true nature. So even we uh, visualize or generate a wrathful deity that is like, you know, one face or two arms or three face and six arms or you know, just a, a nine face or many heads uh, in this way. And uh, however, that even the uh, wrathful deity appearances or the generation of the deity itself also has to be in the nature of the uh, compassion and then the emptiness. If, uh, if it is not influenced by compassion and emptiness, then that will become an ordinary appearance. So uh, if one does not have these qualities, then uh, one visualizes a wrathful deity, which is just become uh, an accomplishment of a ghost or a spirit. Uh, so the self-characterized deities just uh, does not really help to liberate. <laughs> So although we think of that I am such and such a deity when we are doing the visualization of the deity, uh, but at that time one should not influence with the, uh, the dualistic thought or then the uh, self-characterized thought or conceptual thought that it has to be just uh, in the nature of the emptiness, union with the compassion and the bodhicitta. <laughs> if one just uh, think that, oh, I'm doing a wrathful uh, deity, you know, practice and generating myself as wrathful and then, you know, just you, you, your eyes, you know, widely open, you know, gazing in the sky and then, you know, chanting the mantra, you know, very loud and then, you know, appearing as something very wrathful, self-characterized, that will not benefit you. Mm-hmm. <coughs> 
So that uh, the lay practitioners known as the Ngapa and then uh, someone uh, negative in a way just uh, visualizing this Red Bull deity and then you know having all this kind of negative thought and then uh, chanting you know uh, the uh, mantras to just uh, subdue or to harm you know some um, someone else and that uh, that possibly could just fall into such kind of you know wrong practice as one just, um, you know, because of uh, hatred or anger, then, you know, get it through wrathful deity practice, and then uh, having, you know, so much uh, anger, and then, uh, um, uh, and then visualizing in that way, and then uh, just uh, through the visualization, just thinking that uh, to just harm and kill and, you know, disturb, you know, other, whoever the sentient beings are, and in that, uh, you know, there are possible that uh, one could uh, just uh, through the visualization, one could do certain things. But that is the uh, same like an ordinary being who are just, you know, killing uh, other sentient beings. And it is more negative through this kind of visualization practice. This is so that is why all these uh, wrathful deities, however it may appear wrathful, that is also mainly based on the compassion. It is not uh, that uh, kind of, you know, hatred or anger arise in that uh, wrathful deity. <laughs> and uh, right now, the Torosa practice that uh, is also the all of the Shora, the compassionate deity, arise from compassion in form of the wrathful uh, Torosa. So whatever sorts of Dharma practice we may do, it is everything has to be based on compassion, loving kindness, and then the bodhicitta. And then the actual, then the actual uh, meditation uh, practice of not having the conceptual thought that uh, uh, one's mind is dream not being afflicted by all this, you know, affliction, whatever that uh, the deity practice or dharma practice, whatever it is. So even in the beginning, uh, when you just uh, listen to a teaching, then uh, there were the you know three fault of a vessel that uh, the uh, the container which is you know upside down, the container which is uh, just uh, you know just uh, which has the hole that is leaking, and the container which is mixture with the poisons. And then also that uh, there is also explained about the five, uh, six uh, stains that uh, which is a uh, which is a obstruction for one's you know dharma practice and then also that uh, not really concentrating on the actual meaning that uh, one grabs over the word and uh, not uh, just understanding the meaning or just only you know just thinking of the word and uh, meaning and not understanding the and the manner of the words and in that way there are all these uh, explanations uh, that one have to just properly understand and then 
and try to follow uh, when you are just uh, receiving the teachings. So those, you know, six stands, as you find in the words of my perfect teacher, that uh, having the, you know, pride, that thinking, you know, I'm more uh, better or I understand more than, you know, my teacher, or then uh, having the thought of uh, not having the devotion or interest in the Dharma, and then also not uh, uh, not having the just uh, confidence or reliance in the just you know dharma, no any interest at all, and then the you know outwardly uh, all these kind of distractions, and then discouragement, and then inward intentions, and these are the uh, specifically during the uh, uh, when oneself listening to the dharma teaching, it is a it is a just a stain, so one have to avoid all those. And then just uh, when oneself listening to the Dharma teaching, that uh, sometimes we just uh, hold the words and uh, forget the meaning, and sometimes we only have the meaning and forget the words, and sometimes we just uh, uh, get the wrong meaning, and sometimes we interpret in a different way, and those are also kind of just uh, the wrong method of listening to a Dharma teaching. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then also that uh, when oneself receive the, receiving the Dharma teaching, uh, always one need to have a very humble mind and uh, not having the intention of just uh, to become famous or to, uh, to become something uh, very special or something kind of having a wrong view. In that way, one should not listen, one should uh, tame one's mind with a kind of, you know, humbleness. Mm -hmm. Magung, <laughs> And then uh, as, a, uh, as the part, uh, aspect of this, what we uh, one have to accept during the listening to the Dharma teaching is that uh, uh, oneself uh, having the concept of like a patient and then the just uh, Dharma teaching itself as uh, the medi medicine and then uh, just uh, uh, getting through the practice is like a, uh, uh, getting cured from that kind of sickness. And then uh, at the end, uh, just uh, when one got to completely recovered, and then uh, having that uh, one's, uh, oneself got to perfected with this, uh, with this uh, practice, in this way, one need to have all these, you know, four concepts. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
Then my budget again, don't not forget the Nembalas over. What did it again? Oh, she's Dubicaso, then also you get it. And then also, as it is explained in this, you know, text that uh, 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 applying into the six perfection of such as, you know, generosity uh, during the uh, receiving Dharma teaching, just, you know, making all this uh, arrangement of these uh, offerings, such as flowers and incense and so forth. And then in the, just uh, while you are listening to the Dharma teaching, just maintaining once, you know, the uh, pure intention, which is the aspect of the moral, moral conduct. And then whatever just uh, during the uh, teaching itself, whatever kind of problems or just a difficulty or pain one may have, just having the patience. And then one's mindfully concentrated on the, just, uh, on the Dharma teaching. And then just having that kind of just diligence and perseverance in the, uh, receiving the Dharma teaching. And then uh, one's behavior that in a kind of you know, humble and respect manner, through all these, just in a way, following this uh, aspect of the sixth perfection that uh, which one accumulates the merit. And then also that uh, the most important part of the Dharma practice is the just devotion or the faith. And within that, uh, there is the, you know, just uh, clear, uh, clear faith or clear devotion. And then uh, the desire is uh, devotion or that uh, faith. And then uh, just uh, the faith of, you know, belief, uh, which means that uh, understanding the quality of the Dharma teaching or whatever the object of, you know, refuge. And then, uh, you know, really uh, having that uh, belief. And then uh, at the end, the irreversible, you know, faith or the belief uh, that uh, these four, uh, one have to just uh, cultivate within one's mind stream. So in this way, just uh, in the beginning, based on these, you know, uh, preparations and practices that uh, one have to go through, but uh, somehow we have all these, you know, different activity, you know, practice. Uh, so most of the, you know, senior students, uh, maybe you are aware of all this, you know, understanding. And anyway, just uh, have to uh, read and uh, understand these, uh, uh, the intentions and the behaviors. <laughs> And then during the practice, uh, whatever kind of pain or sickness or problem may arise, then one just do supplication prayer to the triple gym, and then you know think that uh, these problems may be become meaningful and useful that would uh, that which I could bear for the benefit of you know all sentient being. In this way, one one need to have a just a pure motivation. <laughs> So the Dharma practice is uh, actually the, everything is uh, carried through practice by the mind. So the mind, the, our, you know, consciousness that uh, how one could really uh, just uh, uh, think uh, of the Dharma and then, you know, cultivate those devotion and inclination and even, uh, even one knows the right way of think uh, relating with the Dharma. Then even you have a headache, still that can also purify lots of you know negative karmas of your previous lifetime. And 
and uh, when you have you know headache and then you just kind of depressed in that way there is no any benefit and uh, someone who does not know anything about the dharma then you know headache is headache and then you have to bear it So, so someone who knows the Dharma, then you know, just uh, one have to just uh, think in a different way, uh, because the Dharma practice, all everything is depend upon the manner of you know how we think. So even you have headache, you know, just uh, you do you know supplication prayer to triple gem, and then also just think, oh, this is the just uh, karma ripening, and you know just generating compassion and loving kindness to all sentient beings, and then thinking that uh, like this kind of headache, it is not just only for me. There may be just hundreds and thousands of you know other beings who also have similar kind of you know headache, you know this uh, sickness. Then just uh, having this headache that all those, you know, parently sentient beings, whatever kind of headache and sickness they may have, this may be just, you know, be it by my, this, you know, headache in that way, if that could to be substitute, and uh, in a way one could think in that way, and uh, it is just a uh, much beneficial and also become just something meaningful, whatever the pain you have through the headache, and uh, in that way one have to just uh, understand how to just uh, carry through the uh, understanding of the dharmas. And even sometimes you have certain kind of, you know, obstacle that your job or work is not uh, uh, not in a proper way and then, you know, worrying so much there is no any benefit. And if just thinking that way and worrying, if that is useful, then it's okay. So, uh, but uh, no use of being worrying instead of that uh, whatever kind of you know obstacle problem difficulty one may have that uh, one could not fulfill one's wishes it is not just only you there are just countless countless you know sentient beings who have similar kind of you know problem and then instead of just being worrying if you generate you know compassion and loving kindness and then thinking that uh, whoever in this world uh, have similar kind of you know problem that all those problem and difficulty that you know i want to bear and i will just substitute for them and they may have all this you know success and fulfill their wishes in that way if you think and just uh, visualize and uh, you generate you know compassion and loving kindness then it is just beneficial for yourself and beneficial for other all other sentient beings in this way you can practice of these you know the even the breathing uh, breathing uh, exercise that which you find in the windows <coughs> So this is uh, the method, method of the Dharma practice. There are many different methods. So, for example, like uh, these beautiful flowers that you do, you see in this, you know, just a uh, market or even the flowers growing in the just uh, hills, and then you think, oh, this is so beautiful, and having that kind of attachment, there is no any meaning. 
So instead of that, if you think, oh, these all beautiful flowers, you know, I just offer to all the ten directions, Buddha, Dharma, and, the, you know, the, the Bodhisattvas, and if you just uh, kind of, you know, offer in that way, not necessarily you have to just, you know, through and offer the real flower in that way. Then only. So similar like that, you know, in this world, whatever kind of material belongings and houses and good things and beautiful things, whatever you see, you know, just think in that way and then, you know, just offer to all these, you know, enlightened beings and that way just uh, one can accumulate merit. And even just, you know, walking and going somewhere, you know, just uh, by the way, you know, simultaneously you are just getting through the Dharma practice. So in this way, you know, any time, whatever just uh, the, uh, whatever the things, you know, that which appears, you know, beautiful and uh, good and uh, nice and uh, anyhow all these material things, whether that belongs to you or whether it does not belong to you or whether it just belong to somebody or not, this all, you know, through our visualization, we can offer to all these, you know, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. And even you just see a kind of, you know, beautiful water or a pond or a animal or any kind of just object, then, uh, you know, just instantly you visualize and you think that you offer to all the triple gem and that way also one can uh, accumulate merit. So even this, our body itself is also assembled of the, you know, hundred deities. And even when we are eating some food, at that time also one can just, you know, visualize and think that, oh, I'm making this offering to all my, you know, body uh, deities. And uh, so by eating this food, of course, you know, it survives your body. At the same time, there are all these, you know, deities within your just a body mantra, so, you know, one can offer in that way. And then also, if you have a just new clothing, then, you know, first you offer to all the triple gym, and then you wear it, it's also good. And even just a Tibet uh, before that uh, when they, uh, the nomads, when they just uh, get the milk uh, from these, you know, uh, animals and then the first, you know, they just uh, offer uh, from the milk to the, you know, uh, three times to all the triple gem, and then after that uh, they just uh, carry to home. And then even you just uh, make some tea, then when tea is boiling and then, you know, just uh, it is almost done. And then first, you know, it just uh, even, you know, one or two drops you just offer to triple gem and then you can just, you know, drink. Not necessarily you have to just, you know, <laughs> offer with a scope, you know, whole, whole bunch of, you know, this water. Just only, you know, one or two drops you can just offer it. <laughs> So 
And then they, all the farmers, when they get their crop um, from the field, and then the first portion, they just also offer to, you know, triple gene. And then when we cook some food, and then first check whether it is just, uh, you know, cooked or not, and you know, first we eat. <laughs> And then just uh, making a tea, you know, whether that tea is okay or not, first you drink a little bit. And then, you know, a cloth also, when you uh, just uh, saw a new cloth, and then you just put it on and just, you know, examine whether it fits you or not. And then, so in this way, if we do, then uh, that uh, one just uh, making all this kind of, you know, app offering to the triple gem, that which one can, you know, just uh, accumulate merit, and at the same time, one will not forget the triple gem. And uh, it is not that, you know, these triple gems, you know, uh, they are not getting any food or water or clothing. Sorry. <laughs> Lama the cat, don't you manage in this? This Lama is just not talks too much. Oh, yeah, that's the name. One road on Turkey, the children, eh? The name, Salon de Papero knows. So this morning is for the Jasa Mundo and then the Turkey practitioners. So the Salon practitioners, you guys can leave. So today, um, two o'clock, afternoon two o'clock, that uh, there is the empowerment known as the Wrathful Guru the, uh, with the Kilaya. So this is for, you know, temporarily, even you have any kind of, you know, sickness and then, you know, just uh, like a back, back pain or chest pain and then kind of like a mentally, you know, having all this uh, tension and uh, problems and, uh, you know, uh, for all this, you know, just uh, have the benefit and ultimately, of course, you know, one attain enlargement. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>